Hey folks, uh, welcome to this video on uh, immune system diseases, vaccinations, and antibiotics. So the first thing we're going to talk about are autoimmune diseases. And I actually myself have an autoimmune disease, so this actually speaks to me. Uh, autoimmune diseases are diseases that attack uh, a person's own body. So essentially, uh, I myself, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but if you can look at my wrist here, um, you'll see that the skin is white and uh, I have no pigment there. So I have an autoimmune disorder called vitiligo and, and what happens here is the uh, pigment cells are attacked by cells in my body. So my own body recognizes them as foreign invaders and attacks them. And so I can't tan in specific spots. So I usually typically have darker skin, but um, I have it in my body. and. And it's, it's interesting how it works because it works uh, symmetrically. So if I have it on my right wrist, I also have it on my left wrist. If I have it on my right knee, I have it on my left knee or right foot, left foot, and so on. But basically what's happening is my cells are attacking my own body. Uh, so some other examples of these autoimmune diseases that uh, we can look at. Uh, one of them is rheumatoid arthritis. And rheumatoid arthritis is where the white blood cells in the body are actually going to start attacking the bones and cartilage in the joints. So if you take a look at this diagram right here, you'll actually see um, rheumatoid arthritis there. Uh, the second type that uh, is associated with autoimmune disease, where the body attacks itself, is MS or multiple sclerosis. And so basically what happens here is the white blood cells attack the nervous system. Uh, more specifically, they deteriorate the myelin sheath that is on neurons. And that myelin sheath, uh, basically, um, we would have these axons, or sorry, these dendrites attached to uh, an axon, and this would be a neuron, and then it has a synaptic knob. And on here are these, they call them hot dog on the bun sometimes, but it's the myelin sheath and they wrap around that. Now in between they have these things, in between they have gaps called nodes of Ranvier. So basically the signal is going to hop here in between from node to node all the way to the synaptic knob where it's going to be transmitted. So we have sensory neurons, motor neurons, interneurons, and so that's how we move, for example. Like I can move my hand through a series of action potentials and basically room or multiple sclerosis um, the white blood cells are attacking that myelin sheath, that that uh, that coating on the outside of that axon, and when it deteriorates, that it slows signals down, makes it hard to move. Uh, the last type is type one diabetes, and so type one diabetes, uh, what happens here is there's antibodies that are um, directed towards or against the pancreas, and in the pancreas, that's where we produce insulin. So um, insulin's role is to regulate uh, sugar, blood sugar levels. And so what's happening is they'll be out of, they'll spike um, if the uh, insulin isn't present or dip. So that antibodies are directed against the pancreas. The pancreas can't produce enough insulin and therefore it can't regulate blood sugar levels. So the next thing we're going to talk about is vaccinations. Now vaccinations are um, basically what it is, is it's being introduced a dead or harmless uh, form of a pathogen. So that pathogen that's a dead or a weakened pathogen that's injected into the body. So you, you can see up here, you can see this needle here. So what's happening here is we inject that dead or weak uh, or harmless pathogen and the immune system responds to it by producing antibodies. And remember in our previous video, these are antibodies. So here's that antigen or that dead or uh, harmless pathogen. And it's got those antigens, those protein markers. And if you look in this section, you can see the antibodies binding to it. So now the immune response uh, is initiated. And so then after that happens, we have the memory cells uh, in step three right here and the memory cells are going to ensure that the antigen is remembered. And then in step four, if there's any future infections, 
um, the immune response is going to be triggered and there's going to be that rapid immune response that's going to stop that pathogen immediately. And you can see that here. Now looking at this graph, this is typically a graph you'll see on the diploma. Now it might ask you what it looks like in terms of uh, vaccination. So if we look at antibody concentration, so this is how much of the antibody is going to be produced. So we inject the pathogen at this point right here. So what's going to happen is we are going to, our body's going to produce antibodies and, and then remember those uh, antigens and I guess essentially produce those antibodies and then so now we see a dip in the antibody concentration. So now here's our second exposure to that same pathogen. Now look what happens after we had the vaccination at this point. Now because it's these memory cells right here have remembered that, now what happens is it initiates a rapid immune response and that's what this spike going up is. So these are antibodies being produced. Remember those little Y-shaped structures? Tons of those are being produced and it's slowing the pathogen. And the immune response in that whole video before is now initiated in the macrophage and golfs, the helper T cells um, signal the B cells and killer T cells, and it goes through the whole process right to the suppressor um, T cells or regulatory C T cells and shuts the immune response response down, but vaccinations are a dead or a weakened or harmless pathogen injected into the body so that the immune response and it starts to produce antibodies so that in any second exposure it initiates an, a rapid immune response to slow down and destroy that pathogen. So the next thing we need to talk about is antibiotics. So antibiotics are uh, something we take um, in order to stop bacterial infections. And so um, it was a great discovery um, to uh, be able to create these uh, antibiotics. One of the most common is penicillin, but it stopped several bacterial infections that really harmed uh, humans in the, in the past. So what happens with penicillin is um, if, we, if we look at a bacterial cell versus a human cell, bacterial cells have a cell wall, whereas human cells do not. So the antibiotic penicillin, actually what its job is, is it actually prevents bacteria from uh, growing a or developing a cell wall. So therefore they can't keep their shape and they're not strong and they die. And so we have different antibiotics used for different reasons, but that's what penicillin is used for. Now we have to be cautious of antibiotic resistant um, if we use too many in the same one, sometimes um, mutated cells can become resistant to them. Uh, also, I wanted to talk a little bit about another disease that uh, we mentioned in videos uh, past, and that's HIV and AIDS. And, and so what happens with HIV in the immune uh, or in the body is it actually attacks the helper T cells and if you remember in the immune response the helper T cells job is to recognize the protein markers on the macrophages uh, on the macrophages membrane and then send chemical signals to the B and uh, B cells and the killer T cells and killer T cells job is to kill any mutated or infected cells B cells job is to produce antibodies so now if we're killing those uh, helper T cells those white blood cells then they can't send those signals and therefore no antibodies are being created and then therefore we can't slow that pathogen down and destroy it. So then eventually it just wears on your immune system and eventually shuts it down by destroying all those helper T cells. So anyways, that's uh, all we have for this video on disease, vaccination, and antibiotics. Hopefully it's been helpful. Remember in these videos, you can play, pause, and rewind if you want. Um, write down the notes, and you can watch them again if you need. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Bye.